This is probably the most important Klaviyo or email marketing tutorial that you watch for your e-commerce brand, which is why I've made it module two of my free email course I'm uploading all to my YouTube channel. And that is basically how to audit your own Klaviyo account. The reason why I'm systemizing this is because without actually you understanding what's wrong in the account, you don't know how to fix it, right? If you were to keep things in house. Obviously, I want you guys to eventually get to a point where you're ready to outsource it to an agency just so that you can remove it from your headspace essentially. But in the meantime, I wanna make the most in-depth tutorial free. I'll put it out so that you don't need to like opt in or whatever to get this. So yeah, give this a watch, watch to the end because I'm gonna show you how to analyze your performance dashboard, how to analyze your campaigns, break down deliverability, look into each flow, and also just run like a holistic account audit. So let's jump into a screenshot, I'll show you exactly what to do now. So essentially the desired outcome for this auditing process is for you to produce something similar to this. This was a brand that I audited maybe like uh, last week or something. I've redacted their names, etc. to obviously for like their own privacy sake, but it's pretty in depth. It's not like these templated agency slides. So if you actually just want me to run the audit for your brand, then just book in a call with me first link in the description and I'll be more than happy to put something together like this for you. So how do I actually like go from a blank document to actually producing something like this? Well, it's by following this rough process. So pretty much when it comes to putting together an audit, you always want to start by looking at the performance dashboard, right? Which you can easily find by just going to home. It's clavio.com slash dashboard. Now in terms of time frame, what I like to do is I always like to look at last uh, like year to date basically, or like last 90 days at least. So for example here, I just wanna select till end of March maybe, and then just apply it. And the thing is, the reason why I do this is to get a benchmark of this percentage right here, where email has been trending towards, the split between campaigns and flows. And once I have a rough understanding of this, that's when I would look back in the last 30 days to kind of figure out like where everything is going. Right? So the first thing I notice is the attributed revenue as a percentage. You know, is this higher than the benchmark or below the benchmark? If it's below, then that means something has changed in the account for the worse, in which case I would look into what that is specifically. Now in this case, 30% is actually not bad. And you can see consistently we've stayed around that 30% range, so I'm not too bothered about that. However, if you were to look into your own account and you see sub 25%, generally that's kind of a red flag in terms of performance. We could probably bump that up to normally between like 25 to 35% relatively easily. Now, it's dependent on the niche, right? So that's why it's like, I'm gonna go through my thinking process in this video but sometimes you just need some experience to understand like what benchmarks to look out for in your niche, which is why, again, you know, if you're a brand booking a call with me, I can just do this for you. But basically this range, a healthy number for this to be is anywhere from 20% all the way up to like 65-ish percent, depending on like the niche. You, We have achieved up to like 75, but that's kind of like a bit too high it's an indication that you need to push more on the top of funnel for that brand. But basically, in terms of attributed revenue, for most niches, you'll be looking at between the 25 to 55-ish percent range. Now, there are some dropshipping brands that are much closer to that 20, 25 range, but anything below 20 is absolutely a red flag. Anything below 25, in most cases, especially if you're a brand, you can kind of look to dial it up a bit more. So the next thing I look out for in the dashboard is the ratio between campaigns versus flow revenue. Now, generally speaking, you're not always gonna have a 50-50 split between flows and campaigns. Most of the time, it's gonna be between 60-40 kind of split either ways. Now, there are cases in terms of various niches where it's gonna be more like 70-30 either ways, like 70% campaigns, 30% flows, or the other way around. Either of those is completely fine. The ranges where you should be a bit more concerned about is when it goes above like the 80-20 split type of territory. That just means that you can either do more on the campaign side or on the flow side. So again, I would take a look at this and just see if there's any major red flags. You can see this is a 65 to 35 split, generally a pretty decent indicator 
The thing I would look out for is actually on this account specifically, our SMS is slightly weak. So this is something that we would look to improve in the future. So in terms of the dashboard, that's kind of like the biggest tellers of where to actually direct your vision next. However, let's say this all looks okay. The thing that I would move on to next is the order in which the flows are performing, right? So what I would look at first of all is, is the welcome series and the abandoned checkout like number one or number two in terms of revenue production? If they are, great. And then also the re in terms of the rest of the flows, what order is everything else in, right? For example, if you have like, I don't know, a customer thank you flow as number three, and then your abandoned product all the way, all the way down at the very bottom, then you probably have some red flags in the account. So just understanding the rough order of what flows should be at is a great indication of flow health overall. Now, in terms of accounts, there are different nuances. So for example, this brand specifically, they have a very low barrier to entry when it comes to going from product page to add to cart, which is why Abad and Cart is, gener is so high on this specific list of flows. But generally speaking, abandoned product should rank above abandoned cart. It's literally just cause like they have around an 8% conversion rate on this brand. So yeah, you can imagine how many people actually add to cart and you can see it reflected in terms of the volumes as well. And also they have great customer retention in terms of returning customers, which is why customer win back is so high relative to all of the other flows as well. Now, the next thing that I want you guys to pay attention to after you look at overall flow rankings and verify that there's nothing really wrong with it is the revenue per recipient, okay? So revenue per recipient, you really wanna use the welcome series and the abandoned checkout as like the benchmarks of what's good or not. And once you set the benchmarks there, you kind of wanna go downwards, right? So revenue per recipient for welcome and checkout, those should be by far the highest on the account. If you see something else being much higher, then it's definitely an area to kind of like look into. Now, what would happen if you see, let's say the welcome series is all the way down here, for example, right? First of all, you would go check the content. And then for example, you know that the welcome series is influenced by the signup forms, right? So on this account specifically, we don't actually host the signup forms on Klaviyo. We use the third party app, which is why you won't see anything here. But in most cases, if you have your signup forms on Klaviyo, I would recommend to going over to welcome flow and just checking that, you know, like the opt-in rate is decent, it's not on double opt-in, etc. If it's like one of the abandoned flows are underperforming, then I would recommend you guys go into the metric section and just going into the relevant metric, let's say, you know, checkout started, for example, right? Looking at checkout started to make sure like there's not a big crash in terms of the number of events that are being triggered on the account. So stuff like this, is how you would direct like your next step of the audit. Once you spot any major red flags, that's where you would know how to direct your attention to next, right? The next step to look at once you verify that, you know, there's not too many red flags in terms of the ratios between revenue per recipients on the flows is how much is the revenue per recipient account wide? Because if it's too high, as in if this number right here is way too similar to your revenue per recipient of flows, it's an indication that, you know, your campaigns is not doing any of the heavy lifting or you're targeting really warm segments within your list. So that means you can actually broaden out the sending when it comes to sending out campaigns. Generally speaking, revenue per recipient, if you're sending a really healthy amount of campaigns should be anywhere from like three cents all the way up to around 20, 25 cents when you're selling physical products via e-commerce channels. So once we're done with the business dashboard, the next area that I like to look into always is the campaign side of things. Once you're in the campaign section, you'll notice that there should be a performance review data showing overview metrics from the last 30 days. The first thing I always pay attention to is the open rates. Are they dropping or trending? Are they trending up or down over the last 30 days? And also if they're generally considered to be good or not. So you can see on this account specifically, there's a 5.75% drop across the last 30 days, but click rates, but click rates and placed order rates have gone up a little bit. So I'm actually not too worried about this account simply because 50% plus open rates is considered very, very good. So I'm not worried whatsoever. And in terms of click through rates and placed order rates, the thing that you have to understand is I wouldn't actually pay too much attention to these two uh, for now. And even if 
even if Clavio is determining it to be poor. The reason why is how Clavio compares it is they compare your data to the average in your industry. So for example, this brand specifically, they're, they're in the cosmetic space, right? But instead of being like most cosmetics brands where they're selling multiple products across different categories. So for example, it might be, you know, uh, mascara, blush, the application sponges, they sell like false lashes, all of this stuff right? So they're getting compared to those type of brands. And fundamentally, they have pretty different business models because this is a single product store, right? So it's kind of like, I would kind of ignore um, the Klaviyo's analysis of your click rate and also placed order rates. The main thing I would focus on is open rates because they're fairly consistent across the board. But again, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to um, Klaviyo's judgment of them. It's more so, is it above 30%. If it's above 30%, you generally don't have too much to worry about unless you see like a massive trend downwards across the last 30 days, 5% plus. But if you're above 50, like, and there's like, you know, plus minus 10%, it doesn't honestly it doesn't really matter. Now, the next thing I always look at is like the segmentation, but obviously to protect my client's identity, I've kind of kept that uh, blurred out. But underneath the campaign names, you'll be able to see the actual segments that you guys are targeting right? So what I would do is I would look at an account and see if they're targeting too many segments, for example. So for example, on this account, even with the blur, you should be able to see that it's like the targeting is fairly consistent across the board. And that's because we've discovered the best performing segments for this client specifically, right? So the thing to look out for is if like this part of the text is all over the place in terms of length, in terms of like targeting different segments, a bunch of segments are completely unrelated to the, to each other, then it's absolutely a thing that you want to look into in terms of maybe you can simplify the targeting and the way you can kind of do that is by going into any campaign. But for example, and once you click into a campaign, you can go over to audience breakdown, right? And you'll be able to see all of the different lists and segments you're targeting and seeing which ones is the highest revenue producing, right? For example, in the segments that we're targeting, we know for a fact that we were trying to get people out of, we were trying to warm up specific domains. So that's why we're splitting the targeting here. And you can see the warm up process is kind of complete already. So that's pretty good to see. But essentially, if you're targeting a bunch of different random lists, you want to see which is the highest revenue producing and which ones have the least lowest open rates and just exclude them from your future sending pools. That's basically what this audience breakdown really helps with. It also helps when it comes to split testing certain segments against each other. So for example, you know how people do the last 90 day engage, right? If we want to find out what the sweet spot is for a specific account, we might do last 90 day engage, last 60 day engage and last 30 day engage. And we would target all of the segments in one campaign. So that way we're easily able to compare, you know, if the trade off between high engagement is worth it for the revenue generated. You see. So the next really important thing that I always like to look at is the total number of recipients of an email versus how big your list is, right? So for example, you can see our total recipient size, generally speaking, is around 130,000. And you can simply get that by either clicking into a campaign itself, or if the open rate is 50% and the number of recipients is 116,000, then that means, you know, total send size should be around 130. 2000 recipients. So I can do that quick math in my head because I'm really smart. I'm joking. But um, yeah, if, if you want to, if you have more complex numbers, you can kind of look into total number of recipients by going into the actual campaigns itself. And the next place I would, and the next place I would check is the total email profile counts in active profiles. So once you see the email profile count here, so right now we're targeting around 240 average, which is relatively low in comparison, right? So total profile count is 610,000 and we're sending to about 30, 40% of that. We can actually broaden the targeting simply because our deliverability in terms of engagement is doing so well, right? In terms of we're getting on average a 53% open rate. So if your open rate is like 45% and above and you're targeting less than 50% of your total list size, it means you can actually expand the targeting a little bit or it's an indication that you actually need to clean your list a little bit. So it can really go either way. And that's why, again, you know, if you just want me to run the audit for you, because I've looked over hundreds of accounts probably at this point, maybe not hundreds, but like definitely above 100, 
you know, then you can just book in a call with me in the description below. But the sweet spot that you want to be in terms of ratios is let's say you have 100k active people on your list, you want to be sending to around 70,000 of that. So around 70% of your total list size, you should be reaching on a very consistent basis. Now, if it's like, if your open rate is pretty low in terms of sub 30, for example, and your percentage is around like 40%, it actually means that your list needs to be clean. Whereas in this case, because my open rate is really good and we're sending to less than 50 to 60% of the total list size, it means we could just broaden the targeting and it should be okay. Now, going back to the whole deliverability side of things, if you see your campaign open rates to be sub 40, it generally means you have uh, you are facing some deliverability issues on very, very specific domains. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to analyze that right now. But before I do though, the next number I want you to pay attention to is how many campaigns you're sending on a monthly basis. For example, if you're a brand doing less than 100K a month, just send like one or two campaigns a week max, like four to six per month, and you're good. But obviously, if you're above 150-ish, you can really step up the volume and send anywhere from kind of like two a week to three a week, right? So that's gonna be, that's go so that's gonna put you between the eight to 12 campaigns per month mark. And if you're like seven, multi, multi seven figures, you can really dial up the campaign volume as you can see we have done with this brand right here. So going back to the whole deliverability thing, right? If you suspect your deliverability on certain domains to be kind of iffy, how do you actually identify that and fix it, right? So the thing that you wanna do is you wanna go to overview dashboard and where it says add card, you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and it should say something like email deliverability by domain. I've already added the card, so that's why it's not here, but it's gonna be called something like that, like this, and you're gonna just wanna click add card. Once you add the card, you'll be able to easily identify which domains have issues. So you can see for this account specifically, everything is above 50% except Hotmail. So 37.4% is not that bad, generally speaking, However, because the benchmark for this account is at 50 plus, 37.4 indicates that there is some deliverability issues or some emails going into spam for Hotmail accounts, which is why earlier, if you remember when I did the audience breakdown, we were sending to problematic domains the last 45 days because we're trying to improve Hotmail deliverability right now as well, right? So just by looking at this, you want to see what the top performing ones are in terms of open rate and set your benchmark there. There are cases where like, for example, AOL or like iCloud might be 80% plus. You don't want to really, really rely on that. You want to take a domain that's somewhere in the middle of 40 to 55-ish percent and you want to benchmark it at that and then see if there's any domains that are lagging behind severely. Right, so in this case it's Hotmail. And if you see that, you know to kind of apply some sort of warm-up protocols, which I'll cover in later modules of this free email marketing course I'm doing. But essentially, you're gonna to wanna to warm them up, right? And there's a very specific way to do that without causing more harm to your deliverability. Let's look into flows, because obviously flows is another really big portion of your email performance. So you wanna click over to the flows tab and you're gonna to wanna to hit live. And then what I like to do is I always like to sort by revenue highest to lowest. The process that you generally wanna do in each of these flows is you wanna look into, the thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna dive into each of these individual flows. You're gonna look for certain things. For example, one of the things that we like to look for is overly complicated logic. Now, obviously this technically could be considered complicated logic, but the thing is, this is necessary. When I say overly complicated logic, I mean, for example, like conditional filters that has a branch going into people who have placed orders since starting this flow. Those types of conditional splits could be handled with a flow filter, which is why it's considered overkill, right? Whereas because we're implementing Black Crow and getting our pop-ups from Wise Pops, these conditional splits are very much necessary. The next thing I wanna look for is extremely long flow. So for example, if this flow for the welcome series was like, I don't know, 10 emails long, in that case, I would consider it to be too long and then I would click show analytics and then I would look at the conversion rates for the last few emails to see if they were generating any significant amount of revenue. If they're not, I would just cut them right away. And what you're gonna typically notice is that after email 
four, five, or maybe even six sometimes, your revenue for in terms of conversion rates drops below like 0.5%. And if you're not a brand doing high enough volume, it's simply not worth it. And also the reason why our sequence for this brand specifically is like four emails long is because we have really good engagement, right? So you can see 40% open rate, 42, um, 43, like it's not dropping too aggressively and it's still bringing in a decent amount of revenue for this brand, like 1.2K in the last 30 days. However, if this open rate was only like, I don't know, 25%, we would have cut this email out even if it was generating revenue. And that's all to protect deliverable. The next thing I like to look at is like flow filters, because if someone doesn't know how to use flow filters effectively or is overly using flow filters, it could filter out the wrong people from your emails and it just like could kill flow performance, right? And the way to notice if someone's using good or bad flow filters is obviously number one. If you know exactly what filters should be going into what flows, then it's very easy. But if you don't, the thing to look out for is the skip section on each of these emails. So you can see skipped 477, not a problem, right? But if this number was, I don't know, like 15,000, then I it would trigger major red flags in my head. Right, I'd be like, okay, cool. So that means that a lot of people are getting skipped for some reason. I don't need to know the reason just yet because I'm gonna find out right now. And the way you do that is by going into the email itself and then you're gonna go into view details. And in terms of email performance, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to recipient activity. Once you're inside of recipient activity, you're gonna go over to the skip section and you're gonna figure out like why people are skipped, right? So in terms of, people being skipped, you can go to the top here, click the drop down, and you'll see all of the reasons why people are being skipped. And the thing that you wanna do is you're gonna wanna click skipped failed flow filters. In terms of the others being invalid email, etc., etc., that doesn't necessarily matter too much. The main thing you wanna go into is the one with the highest number and 99% of the time is gonna be failed flow filters. And once you go into failed flow filters, you'll be able to see exactly why people are failing and being exited out of the flow. And you'll be able to identify exactly which filters are the problematic ones. Because 310,000 people got skipped, like, I'm not gonna bother loading all of this up for you, so we'll just move on to the next step. But once you look into this column, you'll be able to tell exactly why people are being exited out of the flow. In terms of other things, if I see a really low conversion rate on email one of any flow, it generally is a question around the content of the email. The next thing to look out for after you check for the flow filters is to look at the placed order rates of each individual email. Now, if it's the first couple of emails in the sequence, they should always have the highest place order rates simply because that's when the customer is the warmest. So they are most likely to convert. As you go down the flow, however, you'll see that conversion rates will dwindle in literally any flow, right? The thing that I would really pay attention to is if engagement drops as well as place order rates, then I would consider either shortening the flow or somehow changing around the content of the flow to improve conversion rates. Maybe it's giving away more offers. Maybe it's a case of using more urgency on previous offers. Maybe it's a case of presenting more relevant products to the people subscribing, etc., or just changing the creatives, designing it in best practice structures, etc. And I'll have modules showing you guys exactly how to design and high converting emails in later parts of this free course that I'm doing on YouTube. So do subscribe. Now that basically covers all avenues of email marketing. So remember when I said earlier, any issues that you spot on the dashboard should advise you on where to look next, right? So that pretty much wraps up like all of the auditing techniques that I can kind of show you guys in, in like a blueprinted way. But remember in the beginning of this module, I mentioned that like where you see problems is where you should di direct like your auditing uh, steps, right? Concepts like that is a bit more like, I guess, abstract. So I'll show you in a live audit that I actually put together a few days ago, what I mean by like the higher level insights that I can kind of generate. Obviously this is a brand that's doing 4.3 million a, a month. So I was able to go a lot more in depth because they just have higher volume, but I'll show you some of the like more nuanced insights, I guess I can create off of the back of just seeing the same data that you guys would. So for example, one of the things I spotted was in terms of their link clicks broken down per campaign, right? 
they always had higher unique clicks on certain products because they were their top sellers, right? Whereas they didn't really put that much thought in terms of how they presented the actual products themselves in terms of like uh, email arrangement, right? So for example, one of the things that I was able to identify was that I think it was this, uh, this 1.4 K clicks right here was actually for the product at the very bottom of the email. So that means a lot of people were scrolling all the way to the bottom just to click on this specific product itself, which indicates that it has a higher demand compared to, let's say, product number four in the sequence, right? So one of the suggestions was basically really paying attention to how the emails are laid out because guess what? Not everyone's going to scroll to the bottom. So you're going to miss out on a big chunk of people who don't scroll to the bottom but actually still want to that product, if that makes sense. So that would be one of the things. And then also um, there's different apps that you can kind of use to increase your email performance. One of them that they were using specifically was this app called Fondue, which I'm friends with the founder. We have a lot of experience with. So I was able to give some ex insight on how they can essentially optimize the way in which they were able to use that app, right? And then also one of the things that uh, I was able to spot on this account was they were funneling a lot of the customer thank you into a Facebook group, which honestly it's a bit of an outdated tactic because Facebook's organic reach is very much limited since 2021. So I suggested adding a stage before putting people in the Facebook group of a type form or like a job form of some sort. So that way you're able to get customer feedback in real time. So that way you can get feedback on products as well as like customer experience, customer service interactions, et cetera, et cetera, before they are then fed into the Facebook community, right? So a lot of these insights you can generate once you just have a ton of experience when it comes to growing and scaling e-commerce brands. But honestly, this module that I've made for you guys is more than enough to audit brands sub 150 ish thousand dollars a month. So if you're a founder watching this and you're sub 150, you can go ahead and just audit your own account. Or I mean, look, if you just want like more in-depth insights or something interesting, like feel free to just book in a call anyways. So yeah, looking forward to speaking to you soon and I'll see you guys in the next module.